Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. It's in America, the Winter Soldier movie thoughts. Hydra, I can't believe it. Hydra, awesome. That is that is exactly how you see when I when I watched the first movie, I was like, okay, you can call those Hydra. They're I guess they're Hydra. Well, they're fanatic and they're like you know, but it's not quite Hydra because Hydra is just this vast manipulative infiltrating organization, and that's what they are here. It's Beautiful the way they tie the whole thing together using Zola where you know, I mean I rewatched the first movie just uh, last night it holds up rather well by the way It puts that into a whole new perspective and you're like they must have been planning this they they had to you know So so Zola became part of shield as soon as shield was created and right from the get-go he was just sowing those seeds and gradually, Hydra became even more powerful than they were under the Nazis. Because where do you go when, I mean, when, when Zola was captured, he knew that, you know, Nazi, the, the, the Third Reich was collapsing. So where to go next? America seems to be the source of power for the world. So, amazing. Just spot on of, of, I love that they involved the, the, what is his name, Gary, Gary Shandling, Gary, something, the, the senator from Iron Man 2, the Hail Hydra, it's, it's, it's great, because that little bit, that shows you, he's Hydra, the other guy's Hydra, you know, the guy from the ship, and he's like, it, that makes so much sense, that, I mean, that almost gives you reason to, recommend watching Iron Man 2 in order to get this, but I guess you could get it from the trailers or hearsay. Bottom line is, you hated him in Iron Man 2, now you know, that's why he was trying to get Tony's suit, you know, it's just, yeah. And just the, the whole thing, Zola as, as this machine, you know, do you want to play a game? It's, it's from this one, yeah, I know, I saw it. That's perfect follow-up to, you know, I mean, Avengers, you have flying monkeys? I do not understand. I do. I, I got that reference. And now it's like, yeah, okay, I, I get it. Everyone's talking about these references. I get them now. It's, it's not that funny, you guys. <laughs> and the, the, you know, she's like, well, this must be a recording. I can assure you, I am no recording. And it's, it's Zola, and it's this whole thing of, you know, cut off one hand, it's, you know, you see the, the face thing, and cut off one hand, and it splits into two, beautifully done. And, yeah, gotta love that, you know, Cap smashes the one thing, and then he just reappears on another monitor. That was like Resident Evil Retribution territory, just... I'm not saying anything, I'm just saying, you know, just, <laughs> you really don't want to go down that path, is, is, is all. Now, the, I, I, I apologize for, for bringing that movie into, yeah. So anyway, Zola, you know, he, you know, he, he was diagnosed with a deadly illness in 72 or something, I figured he had some meat. Look, I I don't have any problem with the vegans. I don't have no beef for you guys, okay? Anyway, he died, his mind lived on in, in this machine, and it's like, you know, via insight, you know, can figure out because, you know, we have your, you know, your report cards, your records of phone, you know, phone, contacts, all this stuff. 
using all of that, figuring out, you know, all the, you know, current and future targets. I really love, I'm almost certain that I saw this, when it was picking all the targets, it went in on the White House and it actually did say president. So that's like a, a nice kind of, you know, saying, well, if American citizens can be targeted by the American government, what what citizen can't what citizen can't be what what Americans can't be, so so that's quite nice, and I'm pretty sure at one point it targeted the Fantastic Four building, which I guess explains the reboot. You know, if they're gonna be killing off the the Fantastic Four of that terrible movie, and from what I hear, that terrible sequel, I, I only watched one, I, you know, life's too short, then I may actually have to consider if just letting, no, I, I guess, just, yeah, the, the, the needs of the many, I, I realize that. Now, I quite liked the the whole Winter Soldier kind of arc thing. I, I like that he's he's very Universal Soldier. It's like, why didn't you, you know, report, report now? What's wrong with him? Erase his memory. He's he's been, you know, unfrozen for so long already. I don't care. Dang no, it's ice. Just get out of there. You know, just yeah. <laughs> so so you know, Bucky. Who's Bucky? And and that whole thing, and. I like that the mask didn't come back on once he took it off. So whenever Cap is fighting him, he's looking at Bucky. He knows that that's Bucky, you know. And and that thing, you know, Sam and, and Cap, he doesn't look like the kind who needs saving. He looks like the kind who needs stopping. I don't know if I can, you know, can, can I really stop? him with, you know, and, and then the line that really gets it, you know, what's that thing of something like, until the very end I'm there for something like that, you know, which we got in the, the flashback where they again made him look tiny and skinny, and yeah, just the whole thing, fantastic. And the, you know, I... When when the the they they have that you know electrified little brain you know memory thing I, I don't know I feel like there there's there could probably be a less brutal looking device for that like you know I don't know some some kind of I don't know I I don't know enough about the brain to suggest an alternative I'm just saying. Bug zapper to the face seems a little extreme. I do appreciate though that it did not cover his entire face. Nope, it stopped short of one eye, which I think is is you know I mean he is a soldier. A lot of soldiers like to sleep with one eye open, so they're allowing that. It does also allow for uncomfortably long held eye contact with him, which, you know, considering the nature of the device, I'm sure could be used for some, you know, alternative purposes, I mean. Yeah. So, yeah, just the, the whole thing, you know, the, there at the end, he does actually rescue Cap. I, I love that, again, we see Steve willing to sacrifice himself, because his mission is done. He stopped the three you know, inside hell carriers, and he, you know, and, and brought down S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA, so, yeah, he's, he's ready to die, and if, you know, if, if sacrificing himself means giving Bucky a chance to survive, then that's what he's going to do, and Bucky helps him, but then doesn't stay, you know, he walks off, and you have the, the bit you know, actually, I, I had to walk out and use the restroom, but my my friend explained the... I did not miss the, the 
Quicksilver and Skull, which I'll get to that, don't worry. But but yeah, my, my friend was kind enough to describe the, the scene there at the end with, you know, apparently at the museum and he's like looking at the, the Bucky thing and, you know, he's... So, so it's this kind of thing like he's starting to remember, he's trying to remember, it's been triggered and he's headed down that path now. That's great because his, his handlers are gone and he isn't in, you know, he's still hiding out. So it's going to be a while, but he could come back to, you know, the good guys. So, yeah. Now, the... I quite like the, the stuff with the World Security Council, the, you know, first you just see, the you know, first they just appear by, by image as, you know, last time, but then it actually, you know, they're there in person and then you know things are about to get bad, you know, and it turns out the little badge thing was to zap them. And I love that, you know, the, the thing with suddenly this, I mean, like, you're looking at them and you're like, ah, you know, that guy's like Indian, okay. You've got the, the one sort of English-looking older man. You've got this very kind of European. And you've got this, you know, German lady kind of thing. And the German lady suddenly just starts kicking ass and you're like, well, okay, I guess she learned, oh, it's Black Widow, and, you know, and the one thing that stops Fury from attacking Pierce is that Pierce is threatening to kill Natasha, and that is, you know, that's the, the bond between the two. I really like that, and then she sacrifices herself to allow him to shoot Pierce. That was spot on. And, and Redford really nails it. I mean, the... Yeah, just the whole thing. I love the scene where you see him, you know, spotting the, the Winter Soldier, and he's like, oh, good night, Ranala. And, you know, he's sitting there talking to him comfortably. You know, there's those seconds where you're like, is he going to kill him, or are they going to have a conversation like they're allies? And then, you know, conversation, and then she comes back. And Miss, you know... What was his name? Something. Alexander. Oh. You know, I really wish you'd not, Renata. You know, that was, yeah. Dude's like a senior citizen, and he's still amazing. Yeah, so, the... Let's see. I, I I quite liked you know when when the let's see yeah when when you know when the helicarriers are about to go up you know some guys are like at, at panels like you know trying to make something happen they're like close the pod bay doors and you know the only you know and it's like I'm sorry Dave I can't let you do that. And you've got the, let's see, the, I suppose before I get into a ton of other stuff, yes, I'm, I promise to talk about the, the first post credits scene. Yeah, so much there that's, so, okay, they've got Loki's scepter, and, yeah, that's, that's looking very, very promising, and then at the end, of course, you know, or, yeah, we see the thing with the twins, you know, Magneto's two, and, you know, Quicksilver rushing, trying to get out of the, the cell, and you see Scarlet Witch manipulating these, you know, little cubes, and then she blows them up, you know, just... Yeah, that's... I'm very, very happy 
with with that depiction of and I I didn't know for sure, but this does confirm that their first like the first time they take a substantial role in a film, they're gonna be bad guys. And that's exactly how it should be, because yeah, the comics, I mean yeah, that's that's gonna be good. I yeah. I really do wonder if there's, you know, they're just gonna, like, not mention who the father is since, you know, Magneto is part of the X-Men universe and X-Men is not, you know, Marvel films. Yeah, so... But yeah, that, that, I'm really, really excited to see where, where that goes and, yeah. Now, I think, let's see, I, I quite like the whole thing with the sort of goodbye to Peggy, the, you know, briefly I want to say, I like that in neither of these does Cap have a straight up, like, I guess you you can call it love interest, but it's not really like a for sure they're going to end up together kind of thing. Maybe yeah, it's especially in this one. Although you know, obviously Agent Thirteen, is, you know, headed towards that. I feel like she was only really in this movie, at least in this cut. Anyway, I. Imagine there are deleted scenes that expand her role, but in this, just so that you know she could be in the next one, and then they could start seeing each other, and then we get into that whole icky territory of you know, wait, you slept with me because I remind you of my grandmother or something, but you know, Steve can go to the bar and have a drink with Richard from the 4400 and. That alien from that episode of the next Gen Star Trek: The Next Generation, Subrosa, I believe it's called, and connect over over that kind of issue. Now, I yes, yes, the the line, you know, the the goodbye with with Peggy, the the thing of you know, we're told she helped start Shield. And she had a good life. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's hard and it's kind of tragic for Steve because they were really great together. But, you know, it's, it's good that she didn't pine over him for the rest of her life or something. But, yeah. And, and that she did get to say goodbye to him once he came back, you know, so that she didn't feel bad or, you know go to her grave without realizing that he was still alive from that. I love that the Nick Fury's tombstone literally has part of the Ezekiel quote from Pulp Fiction. That's awesome. Now, the but, but yeah, I, I quite like that there isn't so much of a straight-up love story. I mean, like, Tony Stark and Pepper Potts, very much. You know, Thor and Jane Foster, very much. But with Steve, it's just, you know... T to be fair, in, in, the, in the first one, it was also, you know, it's the 40s playing it slow and also kind of busy, but still. Now, I... One thing I did worry, wonder about from the trailers was if the Winter Soldier is this great assassin, why do we see him out in the open in the trailer bits? And I felt like it made good enough sense. It's not really a, you know, 
it's like with the rest of S.H.I.E.L.D. It might attract attention, it might be big, if it can't be helped. But if it can, then, you know, I mean, he snipes Fury without any real problem and gets away from Cap without engaging in a fight with him. And, yeah, these, these various... He's, he's extremely efficient. I mean, when he, you know... When, when he de-wings Falcon and, you know, out, out you go and, you know, it's like for, for a second or two there you're like, oh, well he's got a parachute, right? And he does and he lands, but he's not going to be able to get back up there. So, you know, I guess, yeah, then he's, he's like fighting, what is it, Brock, Some, something, I don't remember the names, one of the bad you know, badasses at fighting. And... Let's see... I mentioned in the review, the, the, everyone has something to do in the action scenes. I love that Black Widow is, you know, dealing with Alexander Pierce and Nick Fury up in the... you know, the office bit. Maria Hill is dealing with the computer stuff. You've got... The, let's see, uh, yeah, you've got the one scene where Agent 13 does something. She, you know, stops that one guy. Actually, she didn't even stop him, so yeah, that's a, another scene that could just have been excised of hers. Anyway, yeah, you've got, you know, Cap is dealing with, you know, some of the helicarrier stuff. Falcon is also dealing with some of this, you know, if, if any of them didn't go and do what they did, then it wouldn't have worked out. So, excuse me, I, I really love that. Now, I've already mentioned, you know, some of, with, with Cap sacrificing himself and such, I like that it's it's consistent with his character. He is willing to sacrifice in order to save the people he truly cares about, in order to get the job done. And in general there was, you know, I've already mentioned some of the other sacrificing, you know, Fury's jeopardizing a mission because of Natasha. Natasha sacrifices herself, or so she thinks, so that Fury can kill Pierce, you know, now, I suppose that I quite liked the, you know, the bit where they, they get the one guy, the, the, the guy who's on the ship, and it's like, you know, oh, come on, you're not going to throw me off here. That's not your style. You're right. But it is hers, and she, she just kicks him off, and then they're standing there talking about, you know, what about that nurse? Laura Lillian, Lillian, with, with the, what's it, lower lip piercing? I don't know, I'm, I'm just not ready for that. And then Falcon swoops up with, you know, the, the guy in, in his arms, and yeah, suddenly they get some information. Now... I suppose that might more or less cover it. I really like, I mean, with, with Hydra having infected so much, which is what they do, I, I really love that they spent, you know, basically at least two maybe, you know, there's been set up to this reveal. Is, is what I'm getting at. I, you know, the first Captain America is not as good as this one, but it, I really love that nothing in it is retconned in this. Everything is just further explained or explored. You know, we meet Hydra there and see that they are indeed powerful. But here we see how sneaky they can be in their 
use of that power because it's it's right out of the comics them infiltrating this huge organization and even doing it right from the start that's that's brilliant and yeah it's it's a fantastic and yeah I, I really love that they spent a couple of movies build into that because you can't do Hydra justice in one movie if you know other than maybe have it be told from their point of view I guess but that doesn't work what I love about this movie is I watched all the trailers I you know I mean I I did like try to avoid straight up spoilers and and the like but I watched trailers I you know I knew a lot of what was to, you know, I mean, I knew that Winter Soldier was Bucky, you know, and I, I'm also really glad that that didn't turn out to be, like, THE twist kind of thing. I mean, there are some of these movies where when you watch them, you know who the bad guy is going to be, and then when it happens, it's kind of like, yeah, I, I knew that, can we move on, and it doesn't really have too much else in the way of a twist to make up for that, but here the real twist basically is that it is Hydra and just how deep Hydra is in the, the yeah. And I what I love is you don't get that from watching the trailers. Like maybe it's somewhere in the back of your mind. Captain Ryan, Hydra. Could it be Hydra again? You know, were they really defeated the, but you don't you don't know for sure that that's what's going to happen and the fact that that's what it is and that we didn't know it any more than the characters did you know black widow has the line i thought i knew whose lies i was telling you know amazing just when the you know after that whole scene with with and Nick talking about his grandfather and you know the 22 revolver and the whole thing I did kind of expect that you know from Cap's mention that you know there used to be music in elevators you know that once they then took the elevator that old elevator in the you know original shield building thing that once they took that elevator that there would be music there to kind of you know, call back to that would have been especially sweet if it, if it had been the girl from Ipanema, but yeah, I suppose that might just about cover it. I really like the the way that Cap and the Winter Soldier are basically either matched or Winter Soldiers maybe a little better or more well equipped or the like you know it's very much I mean he gets Cap's shield from that I had not expected that but yeah it wow that's <laughs> and the whole thing with yeah that's that's fantastic, and the that that thing he fires where it runs on you know on the on the street and then attaches itself to the bottom of Fury's you know and Fury's little gun in you know in case of you know intruders I I thought I was the only one to have something like that in a car but yeah. And, you know, and, and he mentions, you know, you know, air, you know, fly thing, you know, and, and the car's like, oh, we can't do that. Because if, if it didn't, if it wasn't mentioned, then we'd be like, wouldn't S.H.I.E.L.D. be able to make him a car that could fly, but oh, it was damaged, you know. Is anything in this car not damaged? Air conditioning is functioning fine. <laughs> That's fantastic. I think this is one of the best ones in regards to humor. I feel like it doesn't tip over, you know, it, it's not 
too silly or the like. I, when Sam said, I do everything he does, only slower, that was funny. And the, the whole thing with, on your left, on your left, <laughs> yeah, yeah, on my left, I get it. And then at the end, you know, in the bed, and, and he's playing that, what was it, Marvin Gaye, it's, you know, and it encapsulates all the stuff you've missed. And he, he wakes up and he looks at Sam, on your left. That's fantastic. And I really... I, I love that it ended with Natasha really ending this whole spy thing, you know, saying, you know what, this is it, I, I don't... I don't want to do this anymore, I don't want to lie for a living, and she puts all of her information out there, you know. <laughs> it's already trending. <laughs> Wow. You knew they had to do a joke like that. And the... Yeah, the, the thing with... I can't believe they actually killed S.H.I.E.L.D. Shield in this movie. That, I, I read, you know, a review about, you know, it doesn't take any risks. I don't know, maybe it's just... To me, that seems like a pretty big risk. It's something that we that has been built up over all these movies and that we've gotten to know. But it does make sense, you know. This movie has gotten us the closest to it and the most in depth, and in part because we've seen so much, you know, there maybe isn't too much more, you know, where where do you go from here? Too much more places to go. And, of course, with this whole Hydra thing, you know, killing it, and, you know, yeah, the, what was it, Agent 13 goes to CIA, I think Hill went to the, what's it called, went to work at Stark something, yeah, so, for Iron Man, basically, and, yeah, there's that thing of, you know, it might take you some time to form a new identity. I hope so. You know, that's that's really good with this kind of... Yeah, she's... She's starting a new life. It's... Yeah. And the... Yeah, I'm just... I mean... I think this is basically the last standalone before Avengers 2. So, yeah, I, I mean, this does mean that Avengers 2 stands to have the Avengers sort of operating free of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is interesting. I mean, we have the, the tower for Avengers already, of course, and, yeah, it's just very much... You know, I mean, in the comics, they operate independently of S.H.I.E.L.D. It makes sense for these movies that it would be S.H.I.E.L.D. that assembles the Avengers team. But, yeah, now that S.H.I.E.L.D. is gone, and I think maybe also... I don't know, I think... At least in the long run, if they do... Ease out these you know, the, the S.H.I.E.L.D. people, then that would make room for, you know, adding more heroes, which obviously is what they're doing. I mean, Falcon is almost definitely going to be in the next... I would be very surprised if he wasn't in the next Avengers movie. And, let's see, I guess that's about what's been added. Let's see, Iron Man didn't really... But, but yeah, you know, it'll make Hank Pym with, with, uh, with Ultron, yeah, so. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.